foreclosure movement within the Occupy movement is trying to connect, but you know, there's like 58 counties or 83 in the counties in the state. And it's just however many there are. And the fact is, that is not a structured organization. I recommend that any of you that are connected with any group, large group, whether it's a church, whether it's a movement within the religious community, whether it's a movement within any community, it, do, it doesn't matter. It's all affecting all of us. Get them connected with this information. And I offer, I will go anywhere, anytime, and make this presentation. I believe that if this country, if everybody like you was in this room and understood this, we could get some action. This is outrageous. And we need to step up, and I'm willing to do anything and everything I possibly can. My name is CJ Holmes, and occupy at CJ Holmes, H O L M E S dot com. Yes. against MERS and the banks. They're all linked. You can look at the articles. You can see what they're doing. Some of them are audits. Some of them are lawsuits. Some of them have been done last year. The fact is, we, as a group, need to capitalize on what they did in Delaware and what they did in Massachusetts. And how can we do that if we don't know about it? And it's not like the mainstream media is pumping this out day after day after day. So go to this page, because every time I hear of something, and I have several fabulous helpers that feed me these links, articles, and then I'm, I stick them on my website. Okay, this is gonna be just in the list of articles. Oh, well, this is a lawsuit. Okay, what were the findings? And so then I get the findings, the audit findings, and put that there, so that you can start to read these lawsuits, and maybe that's too much for you, but the attorney that you know is gonna to wanna to see that. Because the attorneys are like trying to climb a slick cliff wall in the rain. They are trying. They go to court over and over and over. There's lots of people that are trying, you know, paying money for the lawsuits. And everybody's trying to figure out what can I plead that the judge won't just throw out. It's very difficult. So, so this can be helpful. You can, you know, copy and paste the pleadings. <laughs> I would. My website is occupy-our-homes.info. Occupy-our-homes.info. And I apologize, it's on these slides, but it's really small. I should have made it, made it larger. Let me finish just one thing. Nevada, Nevada has gotten almost no publicity about this. They passed a law last year requiring, and this is, I just copied the piece on page 10 that applies. They're requiring that if you are going to file a foreclosure document in the recorder's office, then you have, it has to include a notarized affidavit of authority 
that the trustee is actually in constructive possession of the note and the trustee has the authority to exercise the power of sale. Isn't it a shock that foreclosures have fallen like a rock in the back? So I would recommend that we copy that. They already developed it. Let's copy that. Turns out, so, so the Occupy foreclosure people have been, okay, ha, how do we do this? Well, how you change the rules of our, in California County Recorder's offices is you, it starts at the top. So we have to get Harris, Attorney General Harris, to make this, and, and the legislatures to pass this rule and then it will flow down. That's a long process, but that's, that's something we need to definitely work for. And then let me have one last slide and then we'll do questions. Individually, definitely bookmark my site. There it is for you, occupyourhomes.info. Follow me on Twitter if you do the tweets, at Occupy Homes, my last name, because I will tweet changes. I will tweet the videos up. I will tweet, we're doing the foreclosure teaching. I will tweet stuff for people that can follow and, and you know, date changes, because stuff is still sort of in motion. And that can be a, a really good way for you to get updated. If that doesn't work for you, then just send me an email and I will just put you on the blind copy list. <laughs> and we just send out an email uh, so that everyone can get updated. Sorry that that isn't showing up very well. Every week now, Wednesdays at 11, there is a foreclosure call. It's a conference call. It's run, anybody that wants to can join in and just listen. You can share ideas. The fact is we have people now from all over the country onesie twosies, but it's fabulous to hear the person in Missouri or the person in Florida, and they're all trying to coordinate, what are you guys doing? Everybody wants to know, what can we do? How can we raise awareness? And so if you want to be part of the call, just send me an email and I will get you on that list. And it's a place, you know, you they have a dashboard and you dial in with a passcode. And then you can listen, just on the phone and listen to that call. Send me an email, occupy at cjhomes.com. And then definitely connect with every family, friend, group. Bring them up to speed and then get them to do the same. This is how we could multiply our efforts. Thank you very much. Okay, now, did you, should we have some questions? Should people line up? What do you think? Oh, he's going to run around and do the, do the mic. You call him. Oh, oh. You call him. Okay. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Hi. Hi. I really want to thank you for your exemplary work. Thank you. I've heard you on, on Dennis's show. I'm very impressed. I've been asking myself, as a matter of fact, I don't know, what is my part in not to buy? And a thing that occurred to me is to do free counseling with people. And this may be a little ahead of what, because you know, there may not be any centers for this other than you know, on the internet, but I would be happy to be trained to the point where I could work with people and then you know, refer them to those who know more, such as yourselves. That, that as would yourself. be fabulous. And, and this is the point. I can only handle so many people. Right. Um, <laughs> I'm working and I'm, I'm pretty good multitasker. So send, if you want to volunteer to help, please send me an email. Just send me your contact information and what you think you could do. Because we will we'll build this support. People, I'm, I'm really good at, at coming up with the ideas and presenting. But I'm telling you, I, I don't live everywhere. And a lot of people, like people in Oakland, I have a guy in Campbell, in Mendocino County, you know, Fresno, they need somebody local that they can talk to to get even just for moral support. Okay, questions? Yes. So, um, I'm here to do the last $50 a day, so we can find it at every level you could possibly imagine. We have some here to help you. It's a little drag. Can you hear me now? Yeah, that's good. Okay. 
So we've been, the four of us, each of our own individual issues that we've been going on. Um, I actually went to the foreclosure of my house and actually witnessed the corruption that went on at the foreclosure. I carried on like such an idiot. They would not sell my house to anyone who was standing there because he, I kept saying, you're going to sell my house, I have 21 liens on it. Uh, did the bank pay for those liens? Or did, did the title insurance clear them? I mean, I tr I, two of us went and I, I tested them at every step of the way. And at the end of the auction, they turned out and said to me, um, oh, nobody's going to buy your house. So your house was just bought back by the, um, by the, the, bank. the servicer. By the beneficiary. Right. And I looked at them and said, I'm the beneficiary. Um, so it was bought back. There was ob obviously no deed of trust, no chain of title, no bill of sale, no money passed to anyone's hands. And of course, they try to you know come to my house and they've got all kinds of notices and this and that. We're just you know, it's like you don't have any right to a debt collector. You can't collect. So my question, though, now I'm telling you all the story because there's so much crap that's going on. The question I have is. Now that Camilla Harris just did what she did and sold out, where do we now go with that? Because basically, as my dear friend Paul said to me the other day, oh, now it costs $2,000 to commit fraud. Cheap price. I mean, exactly, exactly. So what do we do now when we have an attorney general? His idea is, of course, that we just recall her because it's really, she sold out. She held out for a really long time. I mean, there are no rules governing in California. I mean, the, the, the foreclosure is held on the steps of the courthouse. Right, right. right. <laughs> what do you suggest? I mean, have you had any successes in actually, you know, like you have New York, we've already seen the cases where the judges have said, I'm countrywide, so the judges already gave the houses to the people and said, this is predatory lending, you guys get your house. The, the trick in a, 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 judici a judicial state like New York, where they can actually, they have to go to court, then the people do have a chance to go to court and respond. In this state, non-judicial, we don't have any chance. And the problem, the biggest problem, because it is a deed of trust, non-judicial process, 111 days, you're out, the, is even if you file a lawsuit, the whole issue, and maybe you understand better now after the presentation, the whole issue is ownership. We call it standing. Do you have standing to actually do the foreclosure? The trouble is, that's automatically assumed in lawsuits. So the attorneys have been trying, racking their brains and trying this, that, and the other, to get standing as an issue because it's not a normal issue. You just can't file a lawsuit and say they don't have standing, the judge will throw it out. And so they're const it's very difficult. I've heard rumors, okay? You always hear, oh, they got their house. And I'm saying, well, give me the address. You know, I'll believe it when I see it. It's very easy, because everybody wants to believe that they can actually get this, that we can have a class action, we can get our homes back, we can have our loans modified, we can keep our houses. And, and the fact of the matter is, a lot of attorneys are pretty unscrupulous. And they're going to say whatever they can say just to get money, because they're trying to survive too. So I'd love to have actual proof, okay, I got my house, and, they can, and this is what I did to get it, and this is how it worked. A lot of people say that, nobody's given me proof. I'm sure there is some, but, but you know, you've got you've to prove this. The actual fact is, once they foreclose, take your house back, and most of the houses, by far the vast majority at the steps are taken back by the servicer, the bank servicer, the beneficiary, whatever they want to call them. Yeah. That's all they are. They're, they, they're actually just servicers, and they don't even really collect the debt because they, they subcontract that out. <laughs> they don't want to do that stuff. And, and so the fact is, a lot of people do stay in their home. And I, the worst, the longest one I've heard is 14 months. Because to get a person out of a house, the bank servicer has to file an unlawful detainer, often referred to as a UD by the attorneys, which means an attorney has to go to court and present, you know, represent the banks. So if the bank screws up, misses the court date, whatever, and that's what happened in this case, 
the people will go to court. Nobody showed up, so they went home. And so then there'd be a new date, so they'd show up, and oops, the attorney missed it, and so then they go home. And, and that can't happen. Once, though, that you get the unlawful detainer, the attorney shows up and says, okay, you got three weeks, get out. If you don't get out, then our sheriffs are duty-bound to uphold the law and go and pull you out by the hair and take your stuff out and change the locks on the door. And so some occupied people have said, ah, we don't want the sheriff's stuff. But the trouble is, they're just doing a job. And, and I personally feel we need to fish for the rep line. We need to stop the foreclosures in the first place. Just, I have a petition on the homepage of my website, and it's get the governor, the attorney general, the legislature, just issue a moratorium. These securitized loans cannot be foreclosed. I don't think every loan needs to stop because a lot of individual investors or community banks, they do not, they never played in this securitization game and they own that loan. And that is their right if you're not paying to you know, kick you out of the house and get the house back. Even if they didn't want to, that's, that's often what they end up having to do. So let's not punish them, let's understand that there's different kinds of loans. And the ones we're focused on are the ones held in MERS and used as securitization. Those are the ones that they've been playing all kinds of games with and screwing around with and, and bubbled up our prices, home prices with. Um, you, you've uh, raised a number of questions uh, that you ended with on uh, like the moratorium. But like what I was saying is, um, thinking is the, um, these think tanks that came out in 97 and, 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 and 98 and prior to that even the, the thought of it coming up on how they were going to be a robot, robot, robust force on, on uh, acquiring all this real estate for this this acquisition of, of, of uh, monitoring out properties for profit. The, 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 the individuals, is there any way that we are to, to address that moratorium project to try to, I mean, I'm sure some of these people that, that were part of that first think tank that has brought us to this um, situation is, is far in the background now, but like we still have some of their sons and even Obama is, a, a, I mean, he came from a charter school, the whole process. The, the um, issue is on real estate, on real with estate. our home loans, we must demand they never wholesale them. That would get rid of NHA, that would get rid of Fannie and Freddie, that would get rid of all these other entities that literally screw around with our real estate market and are now screwing around with our lives and our homes and properties. If we literally said, and I believe that it, was, it makes total sense, and why can't we, to say, if I make a loan on my home, it would be like the credit union. The credit union makes loans on homes all the time. They don't sell those loans. They, they're called portfolio loans. They hold them in their portfolio, and then they pull them out and say, is the guy paying? Ooh, cool, he's paying. And so they, they get that income stream. That is the way it should be. And there is no rule or entity alive that can restrict the banks enough to keep them in the box without just saying you can't play with them. We have to take the toys away. And then secondly, on the Ds, you know, these, these uh... Here on the, on the pipeline, on the, on the cliff, and they're saying, this is great, even if their loan is in MERS, it's not really affecting them. It's when, you know, the property value falls, the income falls, the loan explodes, some, some, feature that pushes people into a default question or situation, that's where it starts to hurt. And we've got millions now that are in that boat. You had a question? Yes. Uh, have, have there been discussions around the country of people involved in foreclosure and moratorium movements about taking this issue into the I think to get 
get the word out to millions of people is to try to, some way to inject it. Whenever somebody speaks, a presidential candidate of any party, a senatorial candidate, a congressional candidate, anybody speaks uh, ways of having people show up and press this question. But it was an Occupy, the foreclosure movement kind of thing, pressing these people this year because now there's more attention in the media to anybody who shows up at these candidates' meetings and embraces a ruckus. So about, there's been any discussion on that. What about Kamala Harris's office? Yeah, you, so Jay, we're trying to stack people. Perfect. Okay, perfect. You handle that. Just a sec. He was talking about that over the years, and even as recently as last month, I am sending out information to every media contact I have to the Republican candidates. We already know Obama's going to sell the foreclosures to the hedge funds anyway. I email him on his website. I am asking everyone to pay attention and, and telling them if they really understood that everybody in this country that's losing a home would vote for them if they would, if they would stand up and say, I'll fix this. And guess what kind of response I've got? Nothing. Nothing. And so, you know, we keep trying, but definitely, if we're going to occupy or show up at conventions or meetings or press conferences, we really need to have our act together and, and not be a disgrace. We need to present it in a way that is mature, that is definitely representative of the homeowners of this country, and, and, and that is going to help by having more groups train more people so that they, when they get it, this is, this is mostly, it's been hidden. And if we bring the truth into the light and people understand, then they're going to support. And, and people better than me will write nice little articles about it that others will start to, to comprehend and, and shift the attitude. But definitely it's still all about the people. If people stand up and demand, we'll get something. Somebody was stacking something. Yes. I'm, okay, okay. Okay, she's, she's C stacking. CJ mentioned the affidavit, the requirement to file an affidavit that's working very effectively in Nevada. If everyone in this room called our state senator and state assembly person tomorrow, by then they will have copies of the Nevada version and ask them please to file it right now. The deadline for filing bills is Friday. So this has to happen immediately. This right. week. We have four days to file this bill. Is there any sponsors so far? No, it hasn't been introduced. That's what we're asking. See, we're always playing catch up. It's like, ha, ah, ah. ha. That's one thing everybody in this room can do. And it's easy. Two calls. Right. Say it again, please. We want any bank servicer, any any proposed foreclosure agency to file an affidavit saying that they actually own the property. And by tomorrow morning, they will all have the language. If you just refer to it as the foreclosure affidavit, that yeah. should do it. Yeah, like Nevada did. You know, and I just have a little piece here. I have the whole thing on my linked on my website, the Nevada law. That's one thing. The other thing that everybody can do is please get people who are anywhere in the foreclosure pipeline to come forward. Yes. People are often embarrassed and ashamed because they think it's their fault. Get them to come forward, send their names to CJ, and we, we are trying to put together class action suits. So we need as many people as possible, as early as possible, so we can prevent foreclosures instead of trying to clean it up afterwards. Right. And I have been pushing the idea of uh, getting grand juries to investigate this. I believe that if each county had a grand jury that would look into this foreclosure crisis and put out in the paper, if you have a problem with your home loan and you would like to share your story with us, I think they would be flooded because there's so many egregious stories and people would take that seriously and it would get into the grand jury record. I believe that's one way, possibly, to pull people out of the, you know, the shadows. They're hiding because they're so embarrassed, and everybody thinks it's their fault, and it is absolutely not their fault. They've been cheated and defrauded. All of us have, 
and we need to stand up and not be sad, get mad. I yes. Guess, um, I, my name is Mohammed. I'm from San Jose. I have my home over there. And uh, sometime in 2010, I did modification, and I have never been late. So last December, I got some letters from the mail uh, telling me they, they, I'm, I'm defaulted. And so I talked to them. Um, how did that come about? They said, well, <clears throat> from the tax, uh, property tax. Uh, but this property tax, after they modified my home in 2010, yes. when I started paying uh, uh, June 2010, everything was included. In fact, they, they, they took the property uh, insurance also, which I was paying for the whole year. And they put, it, put everything on. So I thought everything was included, so I've been paying. I don't even look at the statement because they set it up for five years, uh, 3% for five years. Then after the five years, I'm going to pay the next year, one year, I'm going to pay uh, 1% more. So this was set up, so I was not even looking at my statement. So for the past two months, they say I'm defaulted. Right. So, this, so I started talking to the bank. They sent uh, some package to me. Just the, the, the other day after Obama announced this uh, assistance for homeowners. So I got a, a FedEx letter from, uh, you know, uh, they are asking me for modification. I want to modify. So I, I want re refinance. So I don't know where I stand. What I would like you to do is send me your property address and I will tell you where you stand. Okay. If there is a notice of default or an auction date, I will see it. If there is not, I won't. And the other issue is what he's talking about, it, from what I hear, he's talking about the impounds. Whenever a loan is made, particularly with a small down payment, less than 20%, the servicer, pretender lender, makes a uh, an impound account. They collect monthly the ta a, a prorated amount of the taxes and a prorated amount of the insurance. At close, let's say that you just purchased the property, they will require at least six months, sometimes 12 months, prepaid. So that's why part of the reason your closing cost is mushroom, because you're paying a year's worth of taxes and a year's worth of insurance, but each month that you pay, you're paying still a prorated share. So their, their account is always, you know, some months prepaid. So that's what happened to him. He did a loan mod, they didn't include the impounds. And so now they're saying, oh, hey, you're, you're in arrears. And I, there's, I've had people contact me like that. They, they increased the loan amount so much because of past impounds that got missed that it, it put the lady in default. And she said, I can't pay all that amount. Well then, if you can't pay the whole amount, they won't take a partial payment. Because the way California law works, most loan laws, if you make a, if the bank accepts a partial payment, then that is basically a rewrite of the payment. And so they've accepted that as your new payment. So they won't do it. And so they say, no, you can't send me anything but the whole amount. So then these people go, wait a minute, I can't pay the whole amount. And so then it goes into foreclosure. And so in your case, I don't know. The fact is these pretender lenders don't give a hoot. They'd rather foreclose. And this is the problem. So now you've got this problem and we don't know where it stands. And can he get somebody on the phone? Maybe, maybe not. This is, this is another horrific happening. This happens all the time to everybody. It doesn't matter who you are. They're treating us all the same. Um, but send me your address. Send me your contact information. I'll look it up. See what I can help. Um, from the uh, debt servicing uh, perspective, they're using what they call a net present value, and that is not the normal net present value calculation. And, and you know, we'll explain how, 
what calculation they're using, but from the servicer's perspective, when they're about to foreclose, how do they make the determination through net present value? Are you ready? They completely make everything up. There is no sense. And this is partly why, when you understand the whole point is to foreclose, then you can understand the runarounds. Okay. And the only reason they're doing loan mods and short sales, I swear, is because the government has made some kind of emphasis on you gotta work with a paintball. So they go, oh, okay. So they hire two people, you know, for 200,000 requests. And then you wonder why it takes forever to get any response. Yes? One last follow-up quickly. Um, by clouding the title, does that buy you time? Does that do anything for you? Is that worth proceeding? They clouded the title, and it screws the next buyer. And the bottom line is, every title is clouded in at least one way, and then sometimes in other ways. And I'll explain real quick. When, when you buy a house, Normally, the way it normally works is that the buyer side gets to open an escrow and they pick some escrow company, ideally an officer that knows what they're doing. And so typically I like First American Title or Fidelity Title or, you know, pick what I would call a normal title company as opposed to the attorney servicer firms that have been set up to robo-sign documents for this, the bank servicers. So if, if right now, in this market, the buyer wants to buy a bank-owned home, and the bank service, excuse me, it's a, it's a bank service home from whomever, and it's you know, handled by some asset manager, and they have this huge 16-page contract, a fine little print about, you can never sue me for nothing, and their standard procedure is the buyer will you, if you use the servicer's escrow and title company, the servicer will pay. And so the buyer goes, oh, that's great. Doesn't cost me. Well, except it costs you everything. Because when you use those guys, they'll pull up a preliminary title report and there will be some stuff on it that they don't want you to see, so they just take it off. And so they will lie to you on the title. They will give it to you, you'll think it's great, everything is fine, hunky-dory, and then when you go to sell, you discover you actually have clouded title. Now, technically, every loan they put into MERS, they've clouded the title. But that doesn't usually show up in like a first American title search, preliminary title search. What will show up, and I have been involved in transactions where it showed up, and of course we canceled on the buy, or on the buy side, and that is they foreclosed on the wrong person. They foreclosed on the lender of that property, not on the owner of the property. Now, did the owner of the property know that? No. The owner lost the property, but they clouded the title. It is not insurable. You can't sell it because it's not insurable title. Now, if my buyer had been in the bank's you know, um, escrow company and would use their title company, they, we would not have known that. That would have been removed. They would have taken that out and said, oh, it doesn't matter. And so, you know, five years down the road, you want to sell, it matters. And, and so I predict that coming down the road, you know, a lot of people are going to be really, really mad. Yes. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't point. <laughs> Somebody else point. After two years of struggling in all kinds of ways to try to save my house, I lost it to foreclosure in 2010. And... Um, uh, I got this letter recently, an independent foreclosure review, you're receiving this notice, the above property was active in the foreclosure process during this period, the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System and the Office of the Controller of the Currency, by the way, I made a couple of complaints to them along the way, but um, I, I don't understand what this is, and if it's even worth bothering with, um, is it, it I, the no. banks, in, a, in part of the robo-signing settlement with uh, the government, were supposed to send out, I think, 1.4 million letters, so you're one of many, and, and you're supposed to file and 
I don't know, are they going to lose that paperwork too? Yeah. They, they, they always lose, the, it's my dog ate the homework time at these servicers. They will use any excuse. Well, anybody trying for a loan mod or short sale understands what I'm talking about. You send it over and over and over and over and over. Susan, well, did you have something to say about that? For? Okay. What's that? What that, is the review for? What are they supposed to be doing? I, I believe that um, they're, they're just required to do the review. So they just send in a letter. So you're going to send it back if you if you choose to fill it out, and and I have absolutely no way to even know or guarantee whatever gets done. Probably just yeah, thrown in like the trash. Like else for two years. Yeah, it was incredible. I went through every, and so that brings me to the point where, uh, and I ended up, um, they foreclosed and then I declared bankruptcy to get rid of any responsibilities that I might have. But um, I was one. Of, I really think uh, such a drain to go through all these different legal attempts and this and that. Um, I just, what about a mo going to um, uh, occupying Kamala Harris's office until she calls for a moratorium? Until I, I had recommended that. I wanted to march on the office a long time ago. Going over there in the right. <laughs> Let's camp out. <laughs> Absolutely. The, the question is, are all subprime loans basically securitized? Are they all a joke? And the answer is yes. Any NAGAM, Alt-A, subprime, any of those loans that they created, there is not a, a normal fiduciary lender on the planet that would write these loans. Because they're meant to fail. And most of the time, you you know people lend you money because they want to get paid back. And when are you going to? Where? Where's the next place? You're going to be the first place? What? I I I'm not sure. And the fact is, what I recommend you go to my website, and I have a page called Events and Streaming, and I do update that. And if there's a live stream, like for this tonight, I put the link into that spot. So people can just go to the events page and see what's happening. And you know, I was thinking it's March 9th, now it's March 12th. I mean, stuff is in flux and changing. So, you know, just keep checking it out. Or get on an email, send me, you want to, send me an email saying you want updates, and I can send that out or follow me on Twitter. And we'll try to keep this organization, you know, sort of adjusted. Okay. Hi, my name is Paul. Um, thank you for your time tonight. Thank you for yours. <laughs> well, we're here because we have to be, like you said. Um, just hypothetically, if you have a securitized loan, you know where your loan is being, and you have your land document, you can get that out of the recorder's office, you know where it's been, and the two don't match up, there is, by definition, clouded title. What do you do with that to prove it? And what I'm getting at is I have seen, I think it was out of New Jersey, I don't have a copy with me tonight, I probably think you're going to want one after this, but I have seen a legal settlement where there was clouded title, not exactly our case, but similar, and they dismissed the loan. Loan dismissed, home, the home is yours. I swear it's in a judicial state. This is yeah, why California Jersey, is having, was. having such a hard so time. So let's change that. Well, well, how do they get that way? Just the yeah. conveniences of the court and the lawyers. And what about recalling Camilla Harris? The, 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 Let's the, send her a message. I, I do not know exactly why, why 29 states are non-judicial and the others are judicial. I don't know, but I do know that in general, if you have a deed of trust, you have an, everybody has a note. It's a, it's a repayment document. And then to secure that, to connect that to the property, in this state we use a form called a deed of trust. And it, and it hooks, if you will, that note loan repayment to that property. The other judicial states have mortgages, and there's just different rules that apply. And how that got started, probably hundreds of years ago. I mean, they're talking about 300 years of property recording law being completely sidestepped and ruined. Just, it's a mess. 
In fact, some of the Occupy people are talking about the recorder's offices as crime scenes. Not that the recorder's bad, but that everything that's been filed there has been just a fraud and ruined our records and, and stolen the fees. So how are we going to fix that? That's that one way to fix that, which you know I find rather interesting, but then there's issues, and that would be for the counties to eminent domain the empty foreclosures. And there's some discussion of that, and it sounds really great on paper, but the fact is we're dealing with county people, county employees, and who's going to step up and say, oh, I want to take on all the major banks and um, eminent domain, you know, 10,000 houses in my county. Uh, so to get that is like a huge step. That, that may be where we get to, but we're going to have to take a bunch of little steps and do things in an order to, but that's where I think we should end. I really do believe the counties, it would be, it would be sweet, the counties would eminent domain the, all the foreclosures. You could, they could not file a foreclosure without the affidavit. And then if they, they would have to modify a loan or the people with those loans and those nasty servicers that won't ever call you back or talk to you rationally would go to the county and say, eminent domain my house and I'll work out a loan arrangement with you. And the county goes, okay. And so on the foreclosures, if they cannot prove ownership, and we already know they can't prove ownership, so the county gets them back for free, the county works with the owner in the home or to get back into the home that was foreclosed and they were evicted from, but it's still vacant. By the way, there's 100,000 homes that are vacant in the Bay Area counties right now. And when you think about the fact that in the last four years, 100,000 people lost their homes, it's a shocking little coincidence. So the fact is if the counties take these back, then they can work with the owners, you, me, and give us a note marked to market. So for those poor people that paid 600, their, their loan would be 300. And the county would suddenly have these humongous income streams yeah. from loans and principal. So it's a solution to county government budgets, it's a solution to keep our homes, I mean it's a solution I really like, and I call it sucking all the stuff out of the husks of the servicers and throwing the husks away. Right. And I think we ought to remove their charters and they're not allowed to do banking in this state. <laughs> and that's me. So how are you recommending that we go to in the county to do this? Well, see, so it's a combination. The, um, some, some people are trying to meet with their county recorder's office. I'm gonna be meeting with the uh, Sonoma County Recorder's Office tomorrow with a couple of other people from different occupies and trying to build a relationship. Because it's not, the, our recorders cannot change the law, they can't do the affidavits, they, they can't really probably do the um, forensic audits without you know, other county people approving the payment. But we wanna set up a relationship because they're people too. Some of these people have, are fighting foreclosures. I mean, the bank people, you know, the tellers and the bank branch managers, some of these people are fighting foreclosures. We're all in the same boat. Nobody in this state is one of those people that are doing this. Everybody in our banks, in our counties, we're all faced with the same problem. We're all fighting those, the rarefied atmosphere of those few people that structured these securities and keep them going think Goldman Sachs. And so we have everything to gain by getting everybody on our side as much as possible. The 99. The 99. Uh, great. Um, so thank you and thank you for being so available. By thank you. Email and, and, uh, the web to reach you. Thank um, you. Great job for writing. Oh, thanks. Um, uh, so uh, is there anyone, so, so for the record, is there anyone uh, above them who could basically say, leave them alone, guys, leave them alone? Above them? You mean Ab the banks? Above the banks. I'm sorry, they rule the world. This round of applause for the Who Who are you going to, who's okay. going to tell Tim Geithner? Who's going to tell him what to do? He's tell, he tells Obama. I, I try to go to the top of the systems and... 
it sounds, it sounds they, like they the are the problem. Are they are the problem. And and by the way, by the way, not to play favorites. You know, Obama wants to sell the foreclosures and hedge funds. Hey, so does Romney. I'm sorry. They all. He says, and the article's on my website. He said we need to just get these foreclosures over with, and then the hedge funds can buy them, you know, and, and rent them to people. I swear, it's like the same playbook. It doesn't matter. It's it's us against them. Okay, great. And uh, and the, my my last question then. Do you know any good investigative journalists on healthcare? Anybody? Leah Berman and her partner, Jeff Oster, Robert Whitaker. <laughs> this is great. That's <laughs> great. Pop them out. She agreed, in principle, to a bank settlement of the 25 billion total for the when country. Was this? Uh, this was what last Thursday. Yeah, a week ago. Um, it, but but re remember, they have not written this yet. So do you think? So that's where I think we should, you know, go to her office. And absolutely, and absolutely, to absolutely. Now she did say, I think yesterday that um, I have an article. If you can just look at the articles, I've just got dozens linked, and I'm doing, trying to do that every day, and I put the most current on top. And she said, I think it was yesterday, maybe the day before, that the forensic audit that um, San Francisco did, she was going, they, he sent that, of course, to her, and she was going to review that and investigate it. And so that's a good thing. And the more, that's one of the reasons people say, or have been saying, you know, throwing out the idea, well, let's get a bunch of forensic audits, but you know, at 30, 40,000 a pop, hey, let me learn how to do that. <laughs> you know, you why make those people rich? I don't I'm know. I'm just wondering, do you think that Obama puts some pressure on her? Because I know that it was a sort of... Oh, I think they just break people's arms. Yeah, I think You are going to cave into these banks if you know what I'm doing. Oh, and by the way, I'll, I don't know for sure, but it wouldn't surprise me at all if they said, we'll, we'll, we'll withhold funds. Come on. Will, you know, the federal government withhold funds from California? We'll do whatever it takes. I swear, these people will do whatever it takes. Did you hear, did you remember Dennis at the beginning? And he talked about Pritzker, and she's a crook from way past who bankrupted banks. By the way, if you ever really want to rob a bank, own one. And this is the point. They own the banks, they ruin them, they, they suck them dry, they take all the money and they throw the, the investors that invested the bank out in the, you know, under the bus. And the fact is, she's been doing this for decades, stealing people's homes with fraudulent loans. And so she's raised the most money for Obama. I mean, this is what we're faced with. These are people, long-time cronies, that will do whatever it takes to keep the game going for them. Um, hi, I'm from Moran. We're experiencing all the same things you all are, are over here. Uh, we also experience going to court. Almost every day, the judges give away homes that are not owned by the um, banks that are asking for the foreclosure. Right. 80 or 90 percent of the homes that you're being foreclosed on are not owned by the bank that's foreclosing on you. That's correct. And you have to find out who owns your 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 loan. And the, the simplest beginning is to write the bank a certified letter and ask who owns my home. And when they write you back about talking about investors, you'll know that your home has been sold to a trust and has been securitized. Right. And I was wondering if you said that when you have a securitized loan, it cannot be foreclosed on? <laughs> Did you say that? No. It, it, oh. They're foreclosed on all the time. No. The fact is it is fraudulent. It is Because fraud. they are making, they are falsifying the documents. Right. And, you know, mainstream media says, oh, well, they're reckless or they're careless. Or right. pick, pick another word other than felony. And no, that's the reckless. point. But the thing you said a while ago is very interesting. You said that someone foreclosed on the bank when they should have foreclosed on the homeowner. Yeah. The truth is 
The bank was the homeowner. I mean, the bank was the, the owner of the loan because they had sold it to a trust and securitized it. And in fact, the owner didn't own it anymore. They didn't owe a debt. It was debt-free to them. It was up to the bank to pay the trust down. Well, the, the, the fact is they just they picked somebody else that was in the chain of title. It wasn't even on the deed. So normally when you foreclose, you foreclose against the owner of the property that's, uh, that holds the deed, the no, grant deed. What I'm telling you yes. is the homeowners don't own these properties anymore. The banks have sold them to trust to many thousands of people on a piece of their property. Uh, no, and when you no, 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 that's the note. No, no, no. You're confusing the ownership of the property and the ownership of the note the loan and so the ownership of the property is in your name you own a home it's in your name you borrowed to pay for it there is a loan that is connected to this property with a deed of trust and it's very confusing because if you own the home you, you know as owner it's called trust deed and if you if you have a note and it's connected, you know, secured by your ownership on that property. It's called a deed of trust. So it can be very, very confusing. Why they use the same words, I have no idea. But you're talking, what you're talking about is the note ownership. They made the loan. They plopped it into MERS. They assigned it whenever they wanted to log in and do so. They to, resell it. They resell it. Oh, they do that all the time. And, and, and there's no records or whatever. And this is why when it says here, every beneficiary, well, boom, they, don't have, they don't have every beneficiary. And, they, and so that the Nevada law, you know, requiring an affidavit stating that you own this, well, they can't do that. And so chances are, what I predict that we'll see in Nevada is a whole bunch of loan mods that actually work. That's right, but here, you know, I actually am very resentful that I'm an American, that I live in a state where I've paid my taxes for 42 years, and I have no rights in foreclosure other than getting a three-day notice to get out of my house. I know. Because why aren't I in Massachusetts where they have rights, and where they have a DA that stands up and passes laws and protects them? In New Jersey, in Pennsylvania, in Florida, all these states have people who take care of them. In California, nobody cares about what happens to us. And so in California, we are going to rise up well, we and better. make them care. We better. We're a leader. Mm -hmm. We have to stand up, and it's you and me. I mean, in our old age, we've got to stand up and fight this. Come on, guys. <laughs> well, I just want to tell you one last thing. The bankruptcy judge dismissed my complaint for Wells Fargo, who's suing me for foreclosure, who does not own my home. See, this is the point. There are really smart attorneys that have been trying to figure out how can we get standing ownership of the note into these pleadings. And so one of the clever ideas that I heard some attorney talk about, he says, when, he said the bankruptcy court, they're having the best luck. He's talking about attorneys nationwide. His name is Neil Garfield. He's on my home page. He has a, a 10 minute little video there about securitization, which how they do everything backwards. And I wrote out what he said on a little um, word processing document. So you can just read it if you didn't want to wait 10 minutes but, and listen to him. It's very fascinating to hear him though. But nevertheless, what he is saying that the best, attor the attorneys are having the best luck with some successful either negotiations or getting the house back without the note in bankruptcy court. Because at least in bankruptcy, you've got judges that like do understand deeds and deeds of trust and stuff like that. Where in most lawsuits, you're not in, a, in front of a judge that necessarily knows anything. And so you're expecting somebody that's not real familiar with securitization or fraudulent foreclosures or robo-signing to make some kind of a decision against Wells Fargo? It's not happening. And, and they're just brushing these attorneys and, and pleadings off. But in bankruptcy court, what they were doing is on the list of assets, they were not putting in the value and not putting in the ownership. They were, they were putting everybody that they could come up with in that you know, MERS, and then they would add the bank, and then they would add anybody that they could find in a securitization um, forensic audit. They put all those names in the bankruptcy court. 
And so then the judge would be forced to ask the opposing counsel or the servicer, oh, so well, who actually owns the loan? How to get it in there? This is the point. You know, you got to really work at it. Yes. Uh, well, Questions? Okay. Okay. I want to go on a couple things. Um, first of all, um, I feel that, I mean, the middle class itself um, is now an impact where everybody's finally realizing what's happening to the world in general, I mean, the United States itself. Um, and also with that, complying with the system, also the Constitution or a system that chooses when to abuse it and when not to abuse it, especially by corporations, there's no point complying with the system. Even though I hate the Constitution, but within the Constitution it says to restore your government. And that's the only way it's going to work, especially when you have Obama going against your rights right now, speaking of which, of the NDAA. And also with that, all you guys are right here, there's always going to be people who are in the middle class who are above you, who are above you. So by the time, I mean, you guys are probably going to lose your houses no matter what, and they're not going to change their seats, especially people who are above you guys, to change their seats for you guys at all. So even though you guys are talking about it right now, it's not going to make a difference. And complying with the system of authority, that with that authority they don't give a crap because they haven't been given for a crap for I don't know how long, they're not going to change. So even 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 complying with all this stuff that I think is pointless from the get-go because it's not going to get anywhere. Is and see, this, is, this is where you are mistaken. Yeah. How am I mistaken? Listen, how long? Okay, listen. Listen. The people in this room, we basically set up and support the law. We are law-abiding citizens and we believe in it. And you know something? There is redress. There are ways, legal ways, and that's what we're discussing tonight, to actually get rid of these people, people that are for a not... Of years? How, how, long, how long are you going to do it for? The, the, the fact is, this, I swear, this this presentation tonight, explaining how it really does work, if we each can get one group that we belong to to listen to what we're doing, it's going to flow like wildfire. How it long really have people is. been trying to do that for? You need to learn to listen and shut up. The, wow, the, the dude, fact wow, is, wow, really? Listen, yeah, listen, dude. I've been in this way more than any of you guys. So why don't you shut up and listen to me? Oh my god. Thanks for your presentation. Sure. I want to just mention that um, uh, group out of Fremont.org is formed a housing committee to try and create Oakland as a foreclosure-free zone. So if you're interested, we're trying to come up with different ideas. And Please, I would and love we to make some, be involved. We have some very concrete ideas that we're exploring right now. Um, but it takes time, and I think Absolutely. this idea of a moratorium is essential. Because we have to have time to exactly. assemble the different ideas that make it fair for people underwater, for clothes. You know, all those situations have to be addressed concretely, but we need a mator moratorium first. Exactly. But if you're interested in, in working on this uh, concrete initiatives for Oakland uh, foreclosure free zone, please contact me after the meeting. Can, can you send me your contact information, please? Thank you. I would love to be involved because the bottom line is Move On touches a ton of people. That they can understand exactly in a legal way that we can do things. And the bottom line is, I, I just feel like there's a big hand in the in the middle of our backs shoving of us shoving us off a plank. They're just shoving homeowners into the ocean, and and we just have to stop that. Give us a breath. Now it's San Francisco has already done the audit. We already know there's fraud. So I got an idea. Stop foreclosures at least while we give a chance to change the rules, you know, go to the recorder's offices, whatever it takes so that we can get a grip on this to keep our homes. And I'm telling you, if we don't, if we don't, they're going to take back so many more foreclosures and they're going to dump them at such lower prices. If you think 30% loss was bad, of course some counties are 50, it's going to be another 50%. So just think where your house price is now and chop it in half. That's where we're going to be ending up in another three or four years. It's really disastrous and everybody will be upside down and eventually, I, I said for two years, the natural and logical conclusion of this action is to foreclose on everyone. That's the end. Mm -hmm.
Uh, I'm next. I think you have to get. I think yes, you have to get back. Yeah. And uh, I got to tell you, just uh, from my experience of the occupies, I want to point out that when you create a physical stack, it gives a much better sense of equity and having. Yes. So for yes. future reference, if you want to create a stack, you take the mic and people line up. Now that said. Um, I really have appreciated everything you've said because in so many ways, well, I'm, we're going to go, we, we're going to lose our, our house, that's a given. I know that. And from what you've said now, I don't even think we're going to go through trying to get a modification because, I mean, why? Why waste all that energy? So we will let go and move on with our lives. However, I really do agree with what I heard you saying just at the very end. If we don't somehow stop this, we are really going to lose everything. That's right. Because yeah. somebody asked, well, who's above the bankers? And you said nobody. And that's true. There is nobody above the bankers. And this is not the United States that's doing this. Exactly. This is global that we are fighting. Right. And to think we have a justice system, we do not have a justice system left. We have a bunch of minions that are called judges and that are called DAs, and they are acting in the interest of the 1%. And when you go and you face those <laughs> police, and you look them right in the eye, they are supporting the 1%, and that's why they shoot young black men in the back with no repercussions. And until we take our country back, we have no justice. So I'm, I'm still working within the system. I'm still that middle class yep. person. But you gotta see beyond that middle class, because this is totally corrupt. And my last statement, so that you totally don't believe anything I've ever said, is look at 9-11 with an open mind.